Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you'd find me in a minute. Part of beginning a journey is not only to know where you're going, but where you've been. Maybe you've had a tough year, a good year, a new baby, new job. Maybe bills aren't getting paid. Maybe you got a brand new car. Maybe your car broke down. Maybe you've just ended a relationship. Maybe your health isn't what it used to be. Life is a journey, but we are in this together and we are not alone. We are with God. It may require hard work, forgiveness, patience, and prayer, but it also requires an open heart for God. God is the master sculptor. He is the master shaper. He forms our lives from beginning to end. That's the hope that we have, that His vision for our lives are so much greater than our own. We may look at our lives like a block of ice, just a pile of mess with mistakes or with flaws, that we cannot become something great. But with God, He can do great things in us, with our flaws included. At the end, when He shapes us and people look at our lives, they're not going to see us and see our flaws. They're going to see His handiwork in us, His greatness, His hands on us, and His glory will be shown. Because God is the master creator. Everything that He does is a masterpiece. Wonderful. Did you know that you are God's masterpiece? Yeah, God does great things in and through every single one of us. Here's the good news. Life is a journey, and today we begin this new journey. Now, we'll think of a journey as a, as, you can think of it as a long journey, as, you know, miles and miles, like going to Kona. That's a good journey, but that's kind of as far as we can go here on this island, you know, to the other side. But when you're in the, in like a, a, a continent that is huge, going from one side to the other, now, that can be a journey, but more than distance, life being a journey, it's about experiences and, and overcoming the, the obstacles that are in our way. And today, as we talk about this new journey, God is going to help us to understand some truths behind beginning a new journey. So if you have your bulletin, you can take out the notes that are in there, and it will help you to follow along. And part of this journey that God gives to us, in fact, every year, God begins with a new, brand new day and a new season. And so when we come into 2017 as, as today, God gives us a sense of this new beginning, this new change, this new direction. Or for some of us, maybe it's, maybe it's just another level step up to God improving something in our life or, or doing something better or greater. And so now it's an opportunity for us to make great changes in our lives for the better, and forever. For some people, change is hard. We don't like change. We're stuck in our routine, and maybe not stuck in our routine. Maybe it's just we love our routine. We love our morning routine. Like, I get bent out of shape, and, and I forget things when my morning routine is off. Like, it, let's just say I'm staying somewhere else in a hotel or something, and I need to do something. If my morning routine is, is off, I... I don't know what I'm doing. Like, where is my shoes? Where is my belt? Where are my car keys? If someone moves something f that I know of that's supposed to be there, and maybe I put out my bag in the morning, and, and Heidi sees it by the door and says, hey, this, is, this shouldn't be here, and then she moves it, I'm thrown off because that was a part of my routine. Now, some of us function in routines. You're very organized. And once one thing is taken out, you get bent out of shape, or it's like, I can't even function. I can't function. You're, you're so organized that you can't function around disorganized people. You try to organize disorganized people so that you can be more organized. Well, when it comes to what God is doing, he sees the final shaping and the final result of us. He is so organized that he is called perfect. Now, the good thing about God being perfect is that whenever he sculpts our life and shapes our life, he will chip away and remove everything that is not supposed to be there. That's, that's what he does well. 
Now, we can either cooperate with him or fight against him. It's our choice. All I know is this. When there is a lump of clay, the Bible calls us clay, then that he's the potter, we're the clay. That when we trust in the potter's hand, great things happen in our lives. But if we fight against him, we're going to feel that fight. We're going to be frustrated. We're going we're to question God. We're going to say, why is this happening to me? Why are you doing this to me? We even say that. But when we trust in his hand, then we can rest assured that even though we feel like something has just been pulled away from us or something has been chipped off of our life or something, is, or something of a disciplinary action is taking place on our lives, we can rest assured that God is doing something great. Why? Because he sees the final picture and he's perfect. We are clay. The Bible likens us to clay. Listen very carefully. Clay can only produce clay. If we are just a lump of clay, a lump of clay can only produce a lump of clay at best. And for some of us, we say, okay, God, I don't, I don't want you to do that in my life. Okay, then you're just going to be a, a lump of clay. Okay, no, I'll just be a lump of clay. Well, I, I want to do greater things. I got to chip away that. No, 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 don't take that away from me. I, I, that, this one, this one I want, I need. No, 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 I got to chip away. No, 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 God, I, I want this. No, you're just going to be a lump of clay. Then I'll just stay a lump of clay. But I want to chip away this part. There's some attitude that you give sometimes towards people. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, you know, I got to tell it like it is. You know, I'm a truth teller. I tell it as it is. Yeah, but you can have some more grace. I can chip this away and you'll have more grace. No, 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 no. People need to hear the truth. It's like God saying, yeah, a lump of clay can only produce a lump of clay. But you bring in the potter's hand. Oh, beautiful things can happen. And only God can do something like that. But before change can happen, before any change can happen for my life, change must happen in my life. You know, everything can be exterior. We can do exterior things and, and, and put on the act. We can change for the moment. It's, it's kind of like when, you know, we're yelling at each other. Ah! Then someone calls you and you answer the phone. Hello. We can change for the moment. We can do that for the moment. But there's, there needs to be something internal that takes place if we want the greater changes. And if you're going to change for the better, change Forever. We've seen this happen as teenagers when we were growing up. When, when, when we would give our parents attitude or we would get grounded. And, and, and then we get frustrated. And then there's a, there's a rift between us and our parents. And then our friends come over or call us up. And they say, hey, let's go to the movies this weekend. And now we have to go to our parents and beg that we can go and play outside or go to the movies or go somewhere with our friends. And our parents says, no, 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 you're grounded. No, 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 mom, please, 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 please. No, mom, 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 I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Mom, I'll never do that again. That's the promises we used to make. I'll never do that again. Please, mom, please, please, just this one time. Can I go with my friends, please? Everybody's going to go. Everybody's going to go. Please, please, mom. Go ask your father, huh? It's like, no sense. But we make promises. Why? Because we're, we're trying to do an external change so that we can have something immediate. And I'll, I'll change. We say, oh, I will never do that again. But what we're actually saying is, I just, I'm just going to change for now so I can get what I want. We do that in relationships. When relationships aren't going well. No, I'll change. I'll change. I will change. Honey, I'm going to change. I'm, I'm going to change. I'm going to be different. I'm going to do things different. And then when it happens again, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. After a while, I say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry of your sorries. Heidi told me one time, I, I, I understand you're sorry, but I'm tired of your sorries. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, how, you know how, how hard it was for me to say I'm sorry? She goes, no, I know it was hard. But you know how hard it is for me to put up with your sorries? I was like, oh, it's like fighting words. <laughs> this is a long time ago. It was like two weeks ago, so it's, it's, we're good. We're good now. But I remember when she said that, I thought, wait a minute. What she's really saying is, I hear you, but I don't see you. I hear what you're saying, but your actions are different than what you're saying. 
And it's like God saying, listen, if, if I'm going to change you, I want to change you forever. Now, will we still make mistakes? Absolutely. Will we still have the flaws in us? Absolutely. But with God's grace, he just takes us from glory to glory, as the Bible tells us. So when, when we begin this new journey of change, we got to remember these three truths. Here's the first one if you want to take some notes. I will want God's hand on my life. That's the first thing we, we want. We want God's hand on our life. No greater hand than the hand of God. I mean, if anyone's going to shape our life, shouldn't it be God? If he's the master creator and he created us in his image, wouldn't we want his hand on our life? I mean, that's, that's, that's the greatest news is to have God's hand on our lives. And because of his perfection, working with an imperfect person, he can still do great things. Because it's, everything that God does is not based on our goodness, our perfection, and how well we can behave. It's based on his goodness, his hand, his power, and authority. And that's how good God is. When he sculpts our lives, when he, when he chips away and pulls away and, and molds and shapes, he's shaping us into the image he sees best for us. He knows how we work best. He knows how we should look, how we should be. He knows how we're created. The best person to have a hands-on our lives is God himself. He's that person. Look at what the book of Isaiah tells us. In Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8, the Bible tells us that you are our father. We are the clay, and you are potter. And all we are the work of your hand. See, when God works on our life, he's... He's likening us to a potter and clay. Now, if you've ever done pottery, if you've ever worked with clay, then you, when you're working with clay, you're, you're pouring yourself into this clay, this odd-shaped block of clay. You're pouring yourself into it. You're, you're marring it. You're pulling at it. You're chipping away. You're forming and shaping, and you're making it into the image that you have in your mind. Now, every once in a while, yes, the clay will have some flaws. Every once in a while, yes, the clay may not cooperate. But that's the greatest thing about God is even when we're having a hard time changing, God says it's okay because you're in my hands. You're not just a lump of clay anymore. And you're not, you're not doing this yourself. You are in my hands and that's the greatest news that we can ever have. Even when we go through the darkest times, God's hand is still on our lives. And when we work and cooperate with him, great things come to pass. The Bible says this in Psalm chapter 32, verse 4. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. You know, that, that scripture actually is likened to like a coach a coach or a sensei to the student, a coach to a player, that the coach and the sensei, the teacher, will have a set of disciplinary actions to bring the very best out of their player or their student. That's what they do. That's what teachers do. They're there so that they can bring out the very best of the person. Now, the, the individual may not like it at that time. And it may feel like, boy, this is so heavy on me. But the teacher, the sensei, the, the, the coach is saying, no, I see greater potential in you. And I'm going to bring that out of you. Now, you can, you can do all you want. You can fight against it. But there will come a time where you're going to, you're going to be so weak that you're going to give up on fighting against me. You're going to come to a place that you're going to say, you know what, coach, I I'll try it your way. Because I'm just exhausted. I'll try it your way. Some of us, even with God, we have to come to a place where we're exhausted to surrender to God. And we'll just say, okay, God, okay, you can have your way. Have it your way. We're just so tired of fighting with God like water being evaporated in the summer heat. 
and then we cooperate with God. But God doesn't want us to just get to a rock bottom place for us to say, okay, I'll surrender. He doesn't want us to get to a place where our marriage is on the rocks and, and then we finally say, okay, you know what, let's just do it God's way. He doesn't want us to wait to that point because now at that point all we're doing is crawling back up just to get to ground zero. And we're fighting just to get back to level ground. God says, hang on. If you begin with letting me shape your life, you don't fight against me. You work with me. Boy, we'll cut time in half. We will, we will come to a place in this new journey that you will love your life. And you will see the great things that I have in store for you. You will walk with me. Not against me, not in the opposite direction, but you'll work hand in hand with me. And when we cooperate with God in obedience to him, you can see the greater promises come to pass. Otherwise, it'll just be promises. But God says, no, you're going to, you're going to see the promises come to pass. Now, every journey is different. And here's, here's the second truth. Every journey has potential for pain and gain. Every journey has potential for pain and gain. We, we, we use that phrase in exercise. No pain, no gain. But with every journey, you're going to have potential for painful moments as well as moments that you gain some things. It's like exercise. You're going to have the pain, but as you go through that exercise routine or whatever it is, a 30-day challenge, a 21-day challenge, a two-minute challenge, whatever it is, at the end of that, as you begin to see results, as your health gets better, as your body becomes more healthy, and you see the great gain, it's like you look back at all the pain and say, that was so worth being here. I'm healthier. I'm happier. I have more energy. I can play with my children, my grandchildren. I'm just, the, the gain is so much greater. There was a football game being played some time ago, and and I remember just after the game was done, a team came back from behind. And, and in, the, in the interview, the post-game interview, I believe it was the quarterback. And they were just questioning, how do you guys come back? You know, this was probably one of the greatest comebacks in history. How do you guys do this? And, and the quarterback said, you know, we, we were all tired. Some of us in pain. Many of us playing injured. But I grabbed the team together and I told them, when, when we win... You're not going to feel the pain you feel because the gain of winning is so much greater that you won't even think about the pain. And sure enough, when they were done, they were celebrating, they were, they were jumping up and down, dancing for joy. And yes, they had to go to the hospital after that, but it was true. The great gain was so great that all that pain was worth it. I look back on my life and I have some painful moments but at every painful moment, when I take a look at what God brought out of that pain, so much of a greater gain. In my marriage, in my family, in my life, so much of a greater gain. We can't see the greater gain when we're in great pain. But God does. Why? Because he's a master sculptor. Every journey has potential for pain and gain. Every journey comes with the potential. Every single journey. And in this new journey together, if, if there is no journey, then we really have no life. Some of us just want to play it safe and say, I don't want to go on this journey. God, I, I just want to be me. Can I just, just be me? And can, can it just be like a normal life, Lord? Why do I have to go through these things? And it's almost like God kind of reminding us that you are destined for greatness. See, this new journey that we're going to be on is not new to God. It's just new to us. That's why the Bible promises that he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Because he knows the journey ahead. Now, not every journey is a good one. We can take bad journeys. We can, we can make unwise decisions. But that's why it's so good to connect with God. I, I love how 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 12 tells us. And, and here's the promise. For God said, 
for God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Now listen very carefully. Now think of the potter's hand. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. This is the, the, the Apostle Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. He's saying, listen, we're going through some great pain in, in carrying around the gospel. But Paul is reminding them, listen, although we're going through some great pain, and although this is difficult, and although there's death at work in us, life is at work in you. In other words, Paul is saying, pay attention to this gospel. Stay close to Christ. Know that God is shaping you to be just like Christ. Jesus. That's the life that is at work in every single one of us. See, you and I will pay the price for what we want. But God paid the ultimate price for what we need. He paid the ultimate price for what we need. We're going to pay the price for what we want. God paid the ultimate price for what we need. And when we partner with him... When his hand is on our life, and when we understand that he's the one that's going to shape us, that every journey has the potential for pain and gain, it's okay because we're in the hands of the potter. And we know that God has greater, much greater plans for our lives than we have for ourselves. And you want to write that in your last point, that God's journey for me is greater than my own because he sees the greatest potential in every single one of us. Now, we can look at our ages and we can say, okay, I'm, I'm a teenager, what potential do I have? Oh, I'm a young adult, what potential do I have? Okay, I'm, I'm in my 40s, okay, I, my, my life is kind of getting stable. I'm in my 60s, I'm in my 70s, 80s, and we can put an age to it, a season to it, but it doesn't change the fact that the potter is still at work in our life. He's still at work. Age is not a factor to God because he's eternal. He will mold and shape us all the way until we see him face to face and reach perfection. You're never out of his sight. He is always the potter. We are always the clay. We work well together with God. Hand in hand. He created us so that we could work together with him. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Yeah, we can, when we're hopeless, that's because we're looking at our lives as a lump of clay. When we're hopeful, we understand that God has greater plans for our lives than we have for ourselves. And when we can understand that, now we have the bigger picture. You have the potential to do phenomenal things with your life. But we must change in order to release that potential. A change needs to take place. See, we're the highest form of God's creation. Maybe for some of us, it's time we think that way. Because sometimes we think, oh, man, I'm I'm no good. I'm unworthy. I did some bad things. I made some mistakes. God doesn't care about me. We'll say these things, but we are God's highest form of creation. we got to think in that way. That, God, I am your highest form of creation. You created me in such a way that I am the highest form of your creation. And you created me in such a way that only this creation, human beings, is the only thing you died for of all the things you created. 
God came for you and I. He didn't come to, to rescue the dirt, the sunsets, the sunrises. He didn't, he didn't come to rescue those things. No, he, he came to rescue you and I. His most prized creation, his masterpiece. He says, no, I, I came for you because you are my highest form of creation. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 tells us now, all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. In other words, dream your greatest dream. Think of your greatest potential. And God says, ah, oh, that's great, but I can top that. Yeah, but this is who I want to be as a father, as a grandfather, as an uncle, as a, a teacher. As a, I, want, I want to be this great in my career. Yeah, that's great, but I can top that. Just dream your greatest dream. And God says, I, I can... Not that yours is junk. He's saying, no, no, that's a good place to start. I can top that, though. But you got to work together with me. Because this new journey with God is going to require us to make some changes. Because his dream for us, his journey, is so much greater than the one we have for ourselves. And so we're going to need him. We're going to need his power. I love how Ephesians 1, 6 says it. And let's read this scripture together. It's in your notes. It's going to pop up here on the screen. Ephesians 1, verse 6. Ready? Go. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Turns. Yeah, we change to him, not him to us. But he's going to do great things in us until Jesus comes back. He's going to continue to do the great work that he began in us. He will continue his greatest work because he knows what he's doing and he knows what we're supposed to end up looking like. He knows exactly what we're supposed to be like. Now, you and I can settle for being in odd shape block of ice, a, a pile of ice, just a, a, a lump of clay. We can settle for that. That's up to you and I. Or we can let God shape our lives and sculpt us into something great. It's our choice. And I don't know about you, but in 2017, I choose to let God shape my life. Scope my life. Let him do the greatest work in and through me. I pray that we all do the same thing. How about it? Can we do that in 2017? Let God do great changes in and through us. And let's see what happens in the future on this new journey together. Amen. You can close your Bibles and put away your notes. I'm going to ask Glenn to come to the keyboard. And, and we're going to close in prayer. And let's, let's get excited about this year. I know for some of us, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a tough 2016, but this is a new journey. Maybe we lost a loved one just recently, and it's, it's a difficult time. And God understands. And on this new journey, maybe God's going to do some resetting in our hearts. Maybe he's going to give us new vision for our life. Maybe new vision for our family, our children, grandchildren, whatever it may be. Let God do that. Let's cooperate with him and see the final results. Would you bow your heads with me as we close in prayer? Lord, you are the potter, we are the clay. You are the master sculptor. And we are so grateful that you alone can see the promises ahead. You alone are the greatest at sculpting our lives, and you alone is the one we trust. For when you pull and chip away and reshape, you can see the final results. We may not see it, Lord, but you do. And even when you're done, even though we had some flaws along the way, even though our life still had some bumps and bruises in them, the gain will be far greater than the pain we've been through. I pray, Lord, for all of us that even though we go through painful moments, some storms and some dark times, that thou art with me and you comfort us. Even through those times, Lord, I pray that as you bring us out of that, that we will begin to strengthen our life with you as well as use what we've gone through to help other people who have yet to see your promises, who have 
come to a place of, of giving up or maybe they just see darkness and gloom and they have no hope. But because we've been through it, Lord, we can come alongside of them and, and encourage them and build them up and draw them closer to you. Introduce them to the master sculptor. Let's be bold this year, Lord, together so that we can reach people for you. You're going to do a great change in all of us, and you're already starting, and it begins in our hearts. So, Lord, we once again dedicate our lives to you, recommit our lives to you in this new journey because you are the God of great change, and we are an adventure together with you in this new journey. We pray for all of these things in your name, and we all said together, Amen. Can we just thank our master sculptor for doing what he does best? He is so good to us. I know this is a, a brand new year, and I'm excited for all of us. I continue to pray that God will do great changes in and through every single one of us. Continue to pray for your family. Continue to pray for those who have yet to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Our heart and our vision here is to always reach out to people who are far from God, one relationship at a time. And we do that with the people that surround us. And in the end, we see God doing what he does best, shaping and forming us into the image he sees best.